playing in a rock and roll band. I never had no problem. All right, we are loving our cover band today. Welcome back to Houston Life, everybody. The 70s are known for a lot of funky design trends. You know, think bright colors, bold prints, shag carpeting, of course. But of course, we always know that what is old is new again, right? And here to explain what fads are making a comeback, please welcome interior designer Paul Brockman. How are you, Paul? Great, thanks. Yo, welcome back to the show. It's been a while. Yeah, thanks. So the 70s, I mean, again, I think a lot of people think of retro as like, oh, we, you know, we live in the now. But when you go through the average home or a designer home, there are so many nods to this decade. So you brought a few items that will help us uh, illustrate that fact, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, and I think the 70s sort of got a bad rap when people think about some of the trends, but what we do now is we sort of take a nod to what they were doing in the 70s, and we, uh, uh, some of the designers have done a really good job of... Um, the things the 70s did well, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. We've incorporated Because wasn't the 70s also like the Harvest Gold and Avocado Green uh, kitchen appliances? Yep. And now we do the with some accessories, so you can pop a color like that. Now, and these yeah. are actual vintage photos of what a kitchen would look like in the 70s, right? Yeah, so bold colors, bold prints. <laughs> oh, wow. You know. That bedspread is really something. Right. I could even make a sweater out of that. <laughs> but, you know, it was inspired. People were taking chances. They were, um, you know, really going all out. And so that was sort of an interesting part of it. Okay, well, maybe after we talk about the good stuff you love, you can share with us the things you, you hope never come back from the 70s. Let's start with some of these accessories from uh, Jonathan Adler. Jonathan Adler, one of my favorite stores. Westheimer and Kirby, right? Yeah, me too, over in West, uh, West Ave. And I don't think you can talk about the 70s without bringing up Jonathan Adler because, yeah. you know, he really encapsulated what was really great about the 70s. And he came out with some wonderful accessories that are inspired and joyful and colorful. So, you know, adding some of these to your um, decor can really be a lot of fun. And um, I love, you know, these vice jars that he has. This is uh, called Puppy Uppers for your dog treats. And a puppy uppers, that's yes. funny. Yeah, and he has all kinds of these canisters with various colors and stripes on them. Yeah, they're fun. You know, and, and, and you know, this beautiful tray is from there, too. It's just a beautiful store, and it's, um, I always say, you can't go into a Jonathan Adler store and not be happy. It makes you smile. It's, it is a little spendy, I will say, but if you sign up for their emails, they do, like, a weekly 50% off, like, special item, right? Yeah, and most of these accessories are under $100, so if you want to add a few things in, you know, it's, um, it's a great way to add a little pop of color. I'm noticing a collection of owls right here, Paul. Yeah. Explain well, why that was so significant in the 70s. Well, you know, the owl, was, it was a good time to be an owl in the 70s. Um, in 1971, the um, Park Service adopted Woodsy as their mascot, and so it was a really big deal, um, and it was the, the slogan, I think, was Hoot, Don't Pollute, and so the Owl really um, became a moniker for the 70s, and you saw it in a lot of decor. It's and interesting because you see it in it's, it's so many stores today, whether it's West Elm, Crate and Barrel, they all have owls, right? Right. And so, you know, to add a, an odd to the, you know, the owl in your, in your decor, and Jonathan Adler does seem these great, um, they're handcrafted, and they have recycled glass in them, and I just think they're a lot of fun. They are beautiful. Let's yeah. move over to our living room setup over here because you've got some great furniture. I love that chair. But you also have some cool tabletop stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, this is, again, a great example of, you know, a nod to a past decade, but it's been modernized. So this is a great chair. This is from Mitchell Gold. Um, and Highland Village on Westheimer. Highland right. Village, yeah. You know, and it's a great resource. I partner with them uh, for a lot of my jobs. But, you know, like, for instance, this chair is the Supernova chair, and it's got a platform base. So, you know, that kind of gives you this little nod to the 70s. But it's a modern, cool piece. And it's yeah. really comfortable. It's a swivel chair, which is also a little nod to the oh, 70s. I love that. And, um, you have a little footstool. That's a great place to kick back and watch KPRC Channel 2, folks. Yeah. Um, what about these tabletop accessories? I mean, is this the kind of stuff that is so off the wall that it would only work in a home that has sort of that, like, you know, 70s, 60s, even mid-century vibe? Well, you know, what I like to do with accessories, and, you know, you don't have to group everything together. So, you know, just pick out a few pieces that are um, whimsical and inspired, and it's a great way to add color and, you know, especially some contrast with these beautiful blown glass um, vases from Joe Cariotti is the designer. Um, you can get these at Mitchell Gold. But, you know, for me, you know, these, these dandelion sculptures and, you know, these bold colors that you saw in the 70s, like this 
you know, of course, this orange that yeah. was that was everywhere. Oh, yeah. So you know, just to sort of pepper these into your decor can be, you know, a great way to add some whimsy and some fun. Whimsy and fun without being yeah. too too overbearing. Yeah. Uh, this shag rug, by the way. This I love this. I mean, shag rugs are in people's homes everywhere today. We were raking it before, <laughs> because remember you had to rake your shag carpets. Do you? Well, yeah, to get the pile up. Oh, you know. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know this. And you know, but this is a modern take on it. So instead of doing wall to wall shag carpets, we're doing them in area rugs. And they're fun. They're soft. I love to put them under beds um, or in living rooms. It's a gorgeous room. And, you know, these are actually made out of polyester, so they wear well. You don't have to worry about, you know, accidents and with your uh, kids or pets. They you clean up. them off in the driveway if they get dirty. <laughs> they're polyester. Also, I want to mention a few more trends. We're just about out of time. Yeah. But this tray that you pointed out earlier, this clear uh, material here is called Lucite. And back in the 70s, I mean, entire pieces of furniture and tables were made out of Lucite. Yeah, and right? we still use a lot of Lucite in tier design today, but I brought that chair, that tray in because, it, you know, it's an example of, like, the brass and the lucite. That's something that's really successful, um, again, in today's decor. And so. also something we're seeing a lot of today, the grass cloth and foil wallpaper. Yeah, I just did a powder room. I don't know if we have a shot of that, but I um, incorporated the foil um, wallpaper, and, um, and that's grass cloth, which is all, oh, you know, beautiful. always, and we do it in different colors now. Uh, the 70s, you sort of did the browns, but we do blues and some great things. And then, you know, uh, you know, but that's another thing, this metallic wallpaper we're using a lot of, and that's from the 70s. I did not realize. Yeah. Also, bringing nature, bringing outside into the home, that's a nod to the 70s. Yeah, that was something that happened. It was sort of the counterculture and the hippie movement of the 70s. People started, you know, bringing, embracing nature and bringing it into their home. This is a house I did in Memorial where we did this beautiful atrium. Um, and, you know, there it is, the outside in. Holy cow. Paul, thank you so much. You always have such great ideas. And if you out there would like more ideas uh, when it comes to design or to connect with Paul, just check out his website at paulbrockman.com.